go over the 2020 AP testing guide. This is from College Board itself. You're probably going to get this talk from most of your AP classes. Uh, if you're a sophomore and this is your only AP class, then pay close attention. There's going to be an assignment that matches this to make sure you watched it. Okay. Do, do, do. Summary of your resources available. You can click on, actually you can't click on this link because it's a video, but you can go to this link, the collegeboard.org one, and it'll give you a list of all the stuff you need. We're probably going to cover most of this. Number five doesn't apply to you guys. Testing demo definitely does. This is going to be one of the assignments you do. Okay, all the stuff we're going to cover. Okay, information. How to get your exam e-ticket. You can't take the test without the e-ticket. It's not just log into your account and show up. There's a ticket you have to get. Uh, it's, I believe, eight digits. You have to enter it. There's a whole bunch of registration info you have to do. Uh, five steps to take before the exam day, things to do to make sure you're actually ready for the exam. This is not from a content perspective, like making sure you studied enough. This is from a logistic perspective, like your computer actually works and you know how to upload stuff. Exam day, things to do on exam day, and then your scores, how to get your credit, and your placement. That's post-test. Okay, about your ticket. Two days before the exam, our exam is April 8th, uh, May 18th, so on May 16th, you should get your ticket. Make sure you're checking your email to find it. If you don't find it, you need to go uh, to College Board and figure it out. You can also access it in your College Board account. That's where you sign in to go to AP Classroom. It's a different tab. You'll find it. The e-tickets are personalized to you. You can't a friend can't text you and be like, oh, I, uh, what's your ticket ID? I can't get in. It doesn't work. They have to have their own. Uh, if multiple people use the same ticket, all the tests are invalidated, and uh, there's the potential that you'll be barred from taking any future AP exams, so keep it secret. Uh, if you're not already registered for a test, you can't register. That was all handled in the testing office. That shouldn't apply to any of you. Uh, your e-ticket, if you do get it via email or you check it online, take a screenshot of it. That way you have it. You're not relying on trying to scramble and find it last minute. Favorite it so you know exactly where it is. Whatever works for you. Okay, here's your schedule. Now, uh, everyone in the world is going to be taking the same exam at the same time. So the time zones are adjusted. We are in central time. So... Environmental science, right here, May 18th, environmental science. Our exam is going to start at 3 p.m. You need to log in a couple of minutes early to make sure you can do all the pre-registration stuff, but the exam starts at 3 o'clock. Uh, make sure you're there. Don't pay attention to these other times. Central time. Uh, if something happens and you can't test, like you go to the hospital or, I don't know, you're super sick and you just can't do it, don't use your e-ticket at all. It'll update uh, and you'll get a new one for late testing. If you use your exam ticket, College Board is going to assume that you took the exam and whatever score you get is the score you get. You lose the opportunity for retesting. So, don't. And the late testing isn't just, mm, I don't feel like it today. It has to be an actual problem. Uh, before they let you take the late test, College Board will do some sort of investigation or probing to figure out if your reason is valid or not. If it was just, mm, I don't feel like it, they're not going to let you take the late test. So you will have foregone your opportunity to take the test. And I don't know how that works with you guys having to reimburse the district or not all that. Uh, Mrs. Eddy or Mr. Rios in the testing office could probably tell you more. Okay, now the June makeup, we're not going to cover this today because none of you are going to need it. Okay. Reminders about your exam schedule. Everyone's test begins at the same time worldwide. That's why the different time zones are important. This part doesn't apply to you guys. Well, not for my class anyway. But... Our exam starts at 3 p.m. Be there. Okay, what to expect. It's not going to be any harder to get a 3, a 4, or a 5 this year. 
the problems, if they seem harder, that's fine, because to score a 3, 4, or 5, you don't need more points than normal. You also don't need to get every part of the question correct to get a 5. They've been purposely made, so you can still be missing some points on either question and still score a 5. It still works. So if you can't answer everything, don't panic and think that you definitely can't get a 5. You still can. Now, 5s are never easy, but you can do it. That part's down here. If you can't answer everything, that's fine. You can still score a 5, even without answering the entire question. If you don't submit your work, though, which we'll cover later, you will get nothing. So even if you're, you, uh, you're starting, starting to run out of time and you haven't finished everything, just abandon, press the abort button, and submit what you have. It's better than nothing. Here we go, what to expect. <sighs> the test is much, much shorter this year than it ever has been. This year it was already amended. Instead of a three-hour exam, it was going to be a two-hour and 50-minute exam. This year it's a 50-minute exam, not even one hour. It's only two FRQs. The first one uh, you have, I think, 30 minutes to answer, and then the second one you have 15 minutes to answer. So it's a much, much shorter test because you have to maintain a certain testing environment when you're at your house. We'll cover that. Make very certain that you do, because if you break that testing environment, College Board may invalidate your scores. Now, it's not super hard, but if you have a big family, it might be a little difficult. <laughs> Fewer questions. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, if I think you should have scored a 3 or higher and you don't, I can contest that with College Board. I believe you can as well. Uh, I don't know the process for that, but... Uh, if I think you should, regardless of any action you take, I'll still submit that for you. Okay. Now, when you actually submit your problems, you're going to look at them online. There is no paper, obviously. Now, you can either copy or paste a typed response. I'll show you how to do that. You can attach a typed response. I'll show you how to do that. Or you can attach photos. If you attach photos, there's a certain format you have to do. And you have to pick one of these. You can't do a blend of copy-pasting and attaching a photo. Or copy-pasting and then you type in your copy-paste. It has to be one of the three. There's no blending. Do, do, do. Okay. Now we're going to go over how to do this uh, with words. And then I'll make another video showing you how to do it on my version of the practice exam. So copy and paste. This is best on a laptop or a desktop computer because you can uh, easily access your files and move them around. You can do it on mobile, but it's more difficult. But basically, you go to some sort of word processor. <sighs> Yawns. Google Docs, Microsoft Word, whatever. Uh, if you're lame, you can use Pages on Mac OS, but you're going to type out your response, make sure your uh, AP ID and your initials are at the top of the response. Then you're just going to select all the text you wrote, copy it, and then go to the actual exam window, which should be open in a browser, and you'll just paste your stuff in there. That's all you need to do. There's nothing else. You just open it, copy, paste, and then you click submit, and you're done. Nothing else to it. Uh, if you're going to do this option, I recommend splitting your screen in half, so does College Board, so you can see the actual exam for the timer. Down here, this little yellow icon, that's where your timer will be, and it'll tell you how much time you have remaining in your test. Uh, and then your response sheet over here on an, uh, the other side. That way you can see the question, and you can just scroll without having to waste time clicking back and forth between different windows. Uh, 30 minutes sounds like a long time. It really is not. Attach a document. This is similar to copy-paste, where you have a document, like a word processor open. You type out your response, but rather than copy and pasting it in, you download your response. There are different formats that are acceptable. There's .doc, .docx. .doc is just the standard Microsoft Office. .docx is open office. PDF is my favorite. Uh, .txt is for nerds, and .odt is I don't even know. So 
uh, you're going to type out your responses, but then you download them. If you're not using my, uh, Google Docs, make sure you're saving your work often. If something happens and you lose everything, that's it. That's, that's your test. Uh, the same as when you copy-paste, make sure your uh, APID and your initials are at the top. Uh, when you have five minutes left, download what you have and then upload it. Uh, if you have two separate questions, you have to do two different files because between the questions you have an upload period. So when you finish question one, you have to upload that before you can start question two. You can't take extra time on question one by giving up question two. Uh, just like copy-paste, keep your windows open side by side. That way you don't have to flip back and forth between them. Yeah. Okay, attaching photos. This is more for like a chemistry or a physics class where you have a lot of math to do, but you can write out your responses on paper, but then you have to take a picture. Uh, when you do this option, Every page that you write on, you can do up to five pages, you have to take a different photo. So if you use a scanning app, like I do for some of your assignments, you can't scan them all into one file. Each page has to be its own separate document, and you have to put the page numbers at the top. So if this was your page, you'd put your Apple ID, not Apple ID, your AP ID, and your initials here in the top corner, and then over here, you would put the page number that it is. Let's say I use three pages, it'd be page one, page two, page three. You can use up to five pages. Uh, that's single side, it's not five pages front and back. Only one page per photo, and it has to be portrait mode, not landscape. So portrait, the tall way. You can't rotate it. Uh, if you have anything to write out, like formula that are hard to do on a word processor, or you just prefer to handwrite, this is the option for you. Now, the default, the only formats it accepts are PNG, JPG, and JPEG. Uh, the default, if you're using like an Apple phone, uh, an iPhone, uh, these are the default formats that your pictures are taken in, so you don't need to do much. Uh, this one is not done on a browser. This one is done if you only have access to your phone, but then you take your pictures and you upload them. This one's a little trickier uh, because you have to flip back and forth between different apps. And when Mr. Blaha was doing this, he accidentally actually closed his, uh, his testing window, and then he had to reopen it because the timer does not stop if that happens. So he had to reopen it, re-log in, and then still get his stuff in. Luckily, he's a boss and it wasn't a problem, but, you know, that's Blaha. Music theory, I'm not going to talk about because I don't care. World languages, I'm not going to talk about because I don't care. Testing with accommodations, this only applies to, I believe, three of you. But if you have accommodations, like extra time, you don't need to do anything special. The testing office has already taken care of that. I'm going to send a separate email to your parents just confirming that the accommodations are, are there. Uh, this only applies to a few of you, even if you get accommodations at Memorial, because Memorial accommodations are separate from College Board. They're not the same thing. So just because you get accommodations at Memorial doesn't mean you get them uh, with College Board. When we did that practice SAT a few, I guess, months ago now, if you had accommodations that day, you'll have accommodations this day. Now, there is some assistive technology that everybody has access to. For instance, you can zoom in on a question. So that's neat. Uh, I don't believe everyone has access to screen reader, though. But everyone has Zoom. Uh, this is another reason why you should be checking the logistics part of your test before you take it, because if you're supposed to have these accommodations and it's not working, then that's a problem. You need to let me know, or let Mrs. Eddie know, or let Mr. Rios know, so we can contact College Board and try to get that sorted out immediately. If you wait until test day, there's going to be problems. You're going to end up having to take the late exam. Yeah. Okay, requesting a makeup exam. Uh, if there's some sort of issue that comes up, like I don't know, a truck drives through your house and you can't test, uh, there's a form uh, that you have to take, uh, fill out. Uh, College Board will take care of everything after that. Uh, you'll get a new ticket. You have to have your original ticket to get your new ticket. So if you lose your original ticket, like you don't access the files and, I don't know, you don't have your password, however it is you would have figured out how to lose it, you cannot take the late test. 
and if you want to take the late test, it has to be submitted within 48 hours. You can't wait a week and then, mm, I think I want to retest. It's too late at that point. So if our test is April, uh, May 18th, you have until May 20th at 4 p.m. to figure out, uh, to submit your uh, makeup thing, uh, request. Uh, you'll get a form a week after that by the 25th saying, yes, you can take a retest or no, you don't qualify for a retest. If you are, you don't have to do anything else. College Board will send you your new e-ticket. Don't call AP services. Anything you need to do, you're going to have to fill out forms or wait for emails. Even Mr. Rios and Mrs. Eddie, they can't call College Board. They still have to do everything through email and pre-filled out forms. Like, the call centers are completely closed. There's nobody there. There's no emergency backups. Nobody is there. You cannot call. And then here are some examples of reasons why uh, makeup tests would be approved or not approved. So you are sick, something happens with your family, or let's say you have a little brother and he comes in screaming in the room and he won't chill. Uh, your battery dies in the middle of the test, there's a power outage, etc. Uh, just running out of time or not feeling like it is not uh, reasonable uh, to request a makeup exam. Okay, the exam screen, it's pretty self-explanatory. The instructions are very clear. I'm going to record a video showing you how to do that uh, using my practice version of the test. Uh, because unexpected things may happen or because you may not be the most familiar with the interface, check it out beforehand. Again, not just the assignments I'm giving you uh, to make sure you're doing it. So you have grades attached to it, do it so you are ready for your test. Uh, everything else that we're going to talk about is details and tips. So I'm going to record this video. If you guys have questions, make sure you answer. I think I'm going to not do the live sessions that I was thinking about it just because some of you guys are trolls. Okay, five steps to take before exam day. These are things you should do before the test. Okay, review your contact info. Make sure everything is good. If College Board is going to email your uh, your e-ticket and your account is an email address that you don't or can't check anymore, that's going to be a problem. So make sure that it's good. Make sure that the test will actually run on the computer or phone that you're trying to run it on. If you have a really old laptop, it may not run. If you're using a obscure browser like Opera, it may not run. So check your technology beforehand. On the practice exam, the video I'm going to show you, in the future, there's a demo that you can take and it walks you through a practice exam. All the steps you need to do to get ready for the test. Practice. That way on exam day you have the full 30 minutes to work on the question. It's not 15 minutes to work and then 15 minutes trying to figure out what to do. Gather what you need for each exam. There are some things that you can use on the test and things that you can't use on the test. Uh, it is open notes, hooray! And then uh, make sure that two days before the test, you got all your information. If the test is May 18th, two days before is May 16th. If it's May 17th and you haven't received your materials, that's a problem. Let me know. Let Mrs. Eddie know. Let Mr. Rios know. We'll try to get it figured out for you. Okay, reviewing your contact info. This is just how to do it once you log into your account. I'm not going to narrate it. I'm just going to leave it here. Pause your video read it, try it out, whatever you're going to do. Okay, boring. Okay, check your technology, make sure everything works. You do not need the lockdown browser on your device. You guys don't have the ability to install that on your school Chromebooks, and I don't even know if a version exists for your, uh, for your phones. Now, if you have Grammarly installed, you have to disable it. Just for the test, you can put it back on when you're done. But you cannot have it running during the test. It will invalidate your score. College Board will give you a zero. Okay. And then when choosing between your writing, uh, handwriting and typing, here are some, some tips. You can read that. Okay, moving on. Prepare your documents. 
decide what word processor you're going to use and then be familiar with it. If you're using Google Docs for the first time and you don't know how to download something as a PDF, then that's going to be a problem. Practice before the exam. We fall under this category. We have two questions on the exam, so you'll need two documents. Name them something clear. Don't just run your fingers across your keyboard and use that. Uh, this is for your information, because if you accidentally upload a different document, that's it. There's no second try. So be very clear. When I label things like this, I like to put uh, the subject, then dash, then my initials, and then dash, and then the date. Uh, that's just me. Whatever works for you, you do it. But practice before the exam. And remember, these are the only four, five formats that are accepted. And my favorite is PDF. If you're going to be writing, there are types of paper that you have to use. It has to be white. You can't use colored paper. Uh, it can have lines or no lines. Don't worry about music theory. Nobody cares. And it has to be reasonably close to 8.5 by 11. That's a standard piece of paper. Uh, you can't use, like, a piece of butcher paper that you rip out of a, uh, rip off of a roll. Or, like, a piece of paper from uh, an art sketchbook. Uh, you have to use a pencil or pen with blue or black ink. No glitter pens, nothing in green or pink. Like, it has to be blue or black. And if you're going to use pencil, like a gross person... It has to be number two. <laughs> number two. You can only have five pages. Nothing more. Uh, you probably won't need that many, but that's the maximum you can have, so keep that in mind. If you have really big handwriting, maybe practice making that a little smaller. If you're going to handwrite, you have to put the page number on it. So you can't just assume that the person's going to read them in the order that you upload them. You have to number them. Page 1, page 2, page 3, etc. You can't just throw them in and expect the rater to, like, okay, well, this is clearly not the first page. Let's figure out where this goes. You, you do that. Here's the demo test. You're going to practice this. I'm going to post the link soon, and you're going to log in and do the practice test. Now, there's not actual content on the exam. You don't have to sit there for the full 45 minutes, but it walks you through the structure of the test where you're going to log in, uh, use a fake e-ticket. There's a, uh, a fake AP number to use, and you're going to enter your info, make sure everything's good. You'll click, like, ready, you're set, and then it has a practice area for you to uh, practice uploading documents. So you can make sure you're good at that uh, before test day. And world languages, don't worry about okay. what you need. You need your exam uh, e-ticket. Uh, make sure you know your AP ID. If you don't know that, that's going to be a problem. Make sure your device works and that it has battery. If possible, keep it plugged in during the test. Why not? Uh, if you have those accommodations, make sure you have access to them. Uh, use one of the common browsers. Don't don't go big nerd. Make sure you're familiar with your word processor. And here's a big one. What's permitted? You can use notes. You can use study guides. You can use textbooks. You can use anything that you have for this course. If you have, like Diego, a separate review book that you bought, you can use that too. The only thing you can't do is get help from other people. So you can't collaborate with people online. You can't be texting someone during the test asking for help. You can use anything except another person. And we don't care about art. We don't care about that page. We don't care about that page. We don't care about that page. Okay, here we go. Here are some resources that can be used. Class notes or study guides. Textbooks or anything else I've given you previous assessments, calculators for some exams. Uh, AP Environmental Science is one of those where you can use a calculator. Now, if you have some sort of collaborative notes, like you're using uh, Google Drive, 
you have to download them separately, not uh, using the live version of the document, where if someone makes a change, you see it. College Board has pretty intricate ways of detecting cheating, and if they detect it, you're done. And they issued a threat that if you get caught being dishonest on this year's exam, you could possibly be barred from ever taking a College Board exam in the future. So if that happens, good luck explaining to a college why you can't take the SAT. Yeah. Now, this one's also important. Just trying to Google the answer uh, is stupid. It's going to waste time, and it puts you more at risk of have being considered to have violated the academic integrity part of your exam. Now, you can use digital uh, resources, digital, so you can access the internet, but you cannot interact with anyone at any point. You're probably going to spend more time looking for help than you would if you just answered the question from your brain. Uh, coming up with specific statistics, like according to uh, Rutgers.org, this says, doesn't matter, the College Board Raiders are not looking for that. It won't help. It's just going to waste your time. And then any form of copying counts as plagiarism, and you're done. If Even if you're just using something from the internet as inspiration, like a sentence or information, reword it into your own words. Do not take any chances of being accused of plagiarism. And then here's a website with some best practices, some tips from College Board explaining what you should or should not do uh, if you're going to use uh, your resources on your open book test. Okay, looking for your your confirmations. Now, this says May 4th, which was yesterday. I heard from other teachers that a lot of students did not receive their emails, so keep checking. I'm going to be checking with other teachers to see if everyone has their tests, not their tests, their information. If you still don't, uh, let me know. Uh, you're not taking your test until the 18th, but you're still going to get a list of all the exams that you're registered for and your uh, your AP number for all of those. Yeah. Uh, and then two days before each exam, that's those extra steps that we talked about earlier, making sure you got your ticket, making sure you can log in, all that. Each exam is going to have a different e-ticket. So if you're one of those super extra kids, uh, like JL last year, I think he took six or seven AP exams, uh, each e-ticket is for a different exam. It's not one ticket for all your exams. There's a five-step checklist. We're going to make another much quicker video going over that uh, thing you should do. Yeah. On exam day, check in. 30 minutes before, the window opens for you to check in. Now, regardless of when you check in, the exam doesn't start until 3 o'clock. So if you're a big nerd and at 2.31, 29 minutes before you check in, you're going to have to sit there and wait until 3 o'clock. When I did my practice test, it only took me about three minutes to make sure all my information was correct. So maybe 15 minutes before is more reasonable, but don't wait until 2.59 and then try to log in because regardless of if you're ready or not, the test starts at three o'clock. So if you wait until 2.57 and you don't confirm your information until 3.05, you've lost five minutes. Yeah. That's no good. Then. Uh, environmental science is a one, uh, two question test, so you'll have 25 minutes. So starting at 3 until 325, you have time to work on the question, and then you have a five minute upload period. That's where you have to get your responses in. If you don't get it in by the end of this five minutes, that's it. You get no points. So that's why you practice before the test begins. Uh, the less of this five minutes that you use, the more time you have to work on the actual question. And then that gets you to 3.30. At 3.30, exactly, question two will appear. And then you read that. You have 15 minutes to work on it and then five minutes to upload. Once that's done, you're done. Music theory, don't care. World language, don't care. Your testing environment. Remove distractions. As best you can, get somewhere where it's quiet and you are by yourself. 
if you have to, maybe go outside. If it's not too hot, it could be a pleasant way to take your test. It just has to be quiet. If you're on a mobile device, put on Do Not Disturb uh, or Vibrate, or better yet, just turn it off. Unless you're using it to take your pictures to upload, there's no real reason to need it. Just turn it off and let people around you know that you're taking an AP exam and they should leave you alone. A couple minutes ago, you, ho you heard homegirl bust into the door into my room while I'm recording. Make sure that doesn't happen to you. Yeah. If you have limited bandwidth, like you're on a hotspot or your internet connection isn't that strong to begin with, just ask your family to, for the next 45 minutes, just chill and read a book or something. Or maybe download the movie from Netflix and then watch it uh, when it's already downloaded. Just limit their bandwidth usage for that 45 minutes. Unless you really are the black sheep of your family, they'll probably comply. And then have the lists of things you need with you. Like have your ticket, have your five steps to do before exam day, have your exam day checklist, have all that stuff ready. Even if you can't print it, just have it open digitally. Exam security. Okay, this is a big one. You cannot incorporate work that is not your own. If it does not belong to you, it does not come from your brain or work that you submitted, it is plagiarism. College Board will probably catch it, and you will be, uh, you'll be you get a zero on this test and potentially barred from taking College Board exams ever again. College Board has ways of detecting. To avoid you guys getting around them, they only refer to it as sophisticated detection technologies and processes. They're not going to tell you what they have. That way it's harder for you guys to work around it. Just don't. If you don't know the material, you don't know the material. Just fine. You'll get a one. That sucks. Uh, this is a problem every year where people post on social media. They put information about the test out before that 48-hour window after the test where you're not supposed to. Uh, College Board is taking that extra seriously this year. If you post anything during the exam, you are now invalidating uh, your scores. And College Board threatens legal action. I don't know if they ever have, but there are, there are consequences. Uh, and this year... This one's new. If you are caught uh, violating the security of the exam, the College Board will snitch to any colleges that use their exams, which are all of them, that you cheated on an, uh, an AP exam. Uh, they are not above snitching, so don't do it. Like I said, if you don't know the info, fine, whatever. Get a one. Don't cheat. You're better than that. Okay, check in for your exam half an hour early. Again, probably more like 15 minutes. Okay, you'll have your AP ID. And then this little timer will tell you what how much time there is until 3 o'clock. Now, this is important. This is the mistake that happened to Blaha. He uh, had to refresh his browser because he accidentally closed it. So he had to reopen it and re-log in. He lost time. And unlike the check-in process before the test, his happened during the test. So he lost time. Luckily, he's Blaha and he didn't need it. And it was just practice. But don't mess with your browsers. Uh, don't sign in 15 minutes early and then wander off to go get a snack. Uh, I did that with my practice test, and I came back and I had lost 10 minutes on my practice test because when this timer hits zero, when it's 3 o'clock, your test starts regardless of anything else. Okay. Here's an example of somebody who wrote on paper and then took a picture. There's their AP number. That's their initials. They are on page one. And just like I've told you all year, very clearly label which part you're answering. This is their part A, this is their part B, part C, whatever. Use those uh, notations uh, to show when you're, uh, which part you're answering. If you just put one block of text, like if they didn't have A, B, and C here, College Board will not, they won't grade it. Uh, disable Grammarly. You can use spell check and grammar check but they don't help. College Board isn't grading you based on your spelling. Uh, the only time that counts against you is if a spelling error changes the meaning of the word. For instance, in chemistry, if you put calcium sulfite instead of calcium sulfide, that T and D switch changes your answer. That's not really an issue in uh, environmental science. This part's kind of a waste of time, but you do have it as an option. 
you can print out the test questions and make notes on them, but you can't submit those as your response. Your response has to be on completely plain white paper. The only thing that can be on it are lines. Uh, two questions is our exam. You can't move on to the second question until the first question has completely run out of time. You can't, like if you look at the first question and you just don't know anything about it, you can't wait until 3.05 and move on to the next question. You have to wait until 3.30. There's no way to get around that. Uh, and let's say for the first question you write and write and write and you think you're good and you submit and then you think of something else to add to it, you can't add, you can't go back, unsubmit it, and add to it. Once you submit, you're done. So make sure you're good before you press submit. Uh, managing your time. You don't have to answer every part of both questions to get a five. Don't wait until there's only a few seconds left to try to upload. Like when there's only five minutes left, even if you're not done, just abandon and submit what you have. If you don't submit anything, like if you miss this five minute window, you get no points. So it's better to get most of your points than none of your points. The timer is real big and it's all over the little pr uh, practice document. I don't think there's a point where you cannot see it. So pay attention to it. If you just run out of time, you do not get to take a late test. That's it. Your score is done. Submitting your response. We're going to make the video explaining that better. Do, do, do. Uh, here are some things. This is what Blaha had to do. He accidentally closed his browser, so he had to re-access his test and get back in. Time still goes, but he's lost that time. And then again, do not call College Board. There is no one to answer your call. No one. You're just wasting your time. You're wasting your energy. You're wasting your resources. It's a complete waste of time. Don't do it. Exam scores, credit, and placement. We're almost done. The raters are going to be grading your... Uh, your responses, just like always. Uh, in order to become a Raider, you have to be a college professor or you have to have taught at least three years in your subject. For instance, this is the first year that I would have been eligible to be a Raider. Uh, normally, all the Raiders get together in like, Cleveland and they'll grade as a group. This year, it's going to be done at home, obviously, because of pandemic stuff. You will probably get your scores beginning about July 15th. That's about a week later than normal, but because people are grading on their own, uh, it takes, it's going to take more time. But by the middle of July, if you don't have your test, contact College Board and they'll, uh, they'll get you sorted out. Credit and placement, I don't really care. Do, 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 credit and placement, I don't care, I don't care. Do, 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 don't care. Check your browser. Make sure your browsers work. This all falls under the stuff. This is all stuff I've said, so I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, your plugins and extensions. If you have uh, if certain ones that you have, for instance, I have Google uh, Dictionary installed, so if I double-click a word, it'll give me a definition. I'm not sure if that counts as uh, disapproved aid or not, so uh, it, uninstall it or disable it just for that hour. You can always put it back in when you're done. And that gets us to the end. I know it's a long one. Uh, your assignment is forthcoming.